Natalie Cole and Lynn August for the Blues Break this morning. I've been attending therapy lately. And no, not for the self-loathing. See, it's fear therapy. I've been having a lot of trouble with fear lately. Fear of death, fear of inadequacy, fear, fear of isolation. But there's one fear that really keeps me from, from getting out of bed in the morning. See, I have... I have omphalophobia, which is a fear of belly buttons. Mm. <laughs> it's true. I never take my shirt off or go to the pool, and growing up, the only TV show I could ever watch was Kyle XY. This fear has really been impeding my quality of life lately, and so my psychiatrist recommended that my mental health therapist recommend a fear therapist who lived deep in the ancient Chinese forest, in a temple that has stood tall since the Han Dynasty. His name is Dr. Overused Stereotype. He recognized that this traditional Chinese name was rather hard to pronounce, so for simplicity's sake, he asked that all his clients call him by his legal American name, Dr. Phil. I've been visiting Dr. Phil for a couple months now, chatting, doing ancient rituals to remedy my problem. He threw everything at me, all the exercises he could think of, and finally, at one of our sessions, he shot up out of his chair and shouted, Brock St. Clair, DJ, at WMSV 911 weekday mornings from 8 to 10, you're impossible. At this rate, we'll never cure this fear of belly buttons. I said, shh, don't say their name out loud. Dr. Phil rolled his eyes and said, Lucky for you, I have a remedy that we haven't tried yet. A remedy that in over 2,000 years has never failed a patient. Follow me. I got up and followed Dr. Phil to his personal library. Once inside, Phil walked up to one of the bookshelves and pulled one out halfway. There was a click, and the bookshelf moved inward, revealing a hidden tunnel lit entirely by torches on the stone walls. We walked down the tunnel for what felt like an eternity until finally... We arrived in a small, tomb-like room with a stone pedestal in the middle. Atop the pedestal was a carving of a dove, the same shape as the dove necklace that Dr. Phil was wearing. And sure enough, Dr. Phil took his necklace off and slotted it into the pedestal. Suddenly, the room sprung to life. A soft blue light emerged from the many cracks in the walls. The ground started to shake dirt and debris from the ceiling onto our, our heads, and the pedestal opened up as if by magic to reveal a 2007 iPod Touch. We sat in silence for a moment. Finally, Dr. Phil said, oh, right, sorry, and pulled out a small speaker from his pocket. It's a Bluetooth speaker, but this is a first-gen touch, so it doesn't have, doesn't have Bluetooth. Do you have an aux cord? I shook my head. He said, oh, it's okay. I've got one. It's just not very good. He fumbled with the cord and finally had plugged one end into the iPod and the other into the speaker and played the juke, my friend. It's the show that airs every Sunday right here on WMSV. 6 p.m. to midnight, blues music, blues that will probably sound a lot better on your device because Dr. Phil's aux cord was, in fact, of very poor quality. After the juke was finished, I felt rejuvenated, okay? Fearless, fantastic. I thanked Dr. Phil and headed home, and look at me now. I can finally, openly, and freely talk about... Be Belly buttons. <clears throat> Lord, up next. I got green light. I'm Brock St. Clair. It's WMSV. It's a long one. Turn out. It's okay. I like the idea of um, Dr. Overused Stereotype. Uh, <laughs> I might use that somewhere else. But, um, thanks for coming. I appreciate you. Thanks, man.